first had a thing and went scout. I think you can remember. I was like, I want to go back home. I don't want to see people are forcing me. I don't want to do this. Da, 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 da. And one of the things one was also not really truly understanding, I think knowledge is power, but I also think, and I think it's Dr. Mimiki told me, you know, they study. And I know we all, I'm sure everyone who's sitting in this room has gone to Dr. Google and read this and that and watched all these videos. And sometimes that information comes and traumatizes you. But I had to reach the point where I had to make a decision about what is best for me. And I think she talks about fat loss lab and all these things that we have done. I had to come to the realization that I needed help and that I could no longer do this by myself. And for me, it was clear that I couldn't do the balloon because after four months, I'd probably just bring back all that weight. I needed something that was going to be permanent to stop me from eating too much. That was my struggle. And one of the things that has helped me is even if I try, I can't. We went somewhere. To Right now, one of the reasons why I'm making this is because we are pastors, so we're always going for visitation, and you're all, in Africa, you're fed. And so the discipline of knowing I can only take this much has really, I think, been helped by the fact that whether or not I stick to it, my body just can't take more. Yeah. If I take a little bit extra, it all comes out. Mm -hmm. And it's a very bad feeling. So that has really helped me. And then three, I think a week ago, we lost a friend of ours to sleep apnea. Yeah. She she slept badly, there was nobody to turn her, and she suffocated and died. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know that I was that sick and even my husband who he wasn't sleeping, was getting dark eyes because every time we go to bed we'd be so afraid because I'd stop breathing and then I'd like like I'm drowning. Mm -hmm. I'd go to the clinic. If you see photos of myself, the neck, I'd go to the clinic and they couldn't see my tonsil. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, for me, I didn't do it for the health. I'm sorry. I just did it for the aesthetics. <laughs> I do not recognize the person that used to look at me in the mirror. And I realized that this, the, the, the self-esteem, the fact that I didn't want to stand in front of people, I felt that I had nothing to talk about because obviously I was carrying my failure in my body. I remember before I met Dr. Mahuja, I went to see one of the surgeons, and I was thinking of doing a posuction, and he was talking to me. And he asked me, so tell me about your weight. And I just started crying. I, even me, I thought, what is happening here? And I realized I had, I was feel, I was so ashamed because I had to remove my clothes to show him and to do the markers we need to cut here. And I was like, I'm not going to live like this anymore. I need to have a life. So for me, I'd say, think it through. Was the operation difficult? No. I've had a cesarean. It was much easier. Actually, after the operation, we woke up and walked to the toilet they're like, where are you going? You need to sit on the But I was, I think the three we wanted to go shopping, and she was like, you have to relax. You have to eat. This is not a holiday. But, and then I was like, I'm not even feeling hungry. That was the weirdest thing. I used to be like, now I would be here, but my whole mind would be on the table outside. I hope they don't finish this and that. And I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. So just, the fact that I wasn't feeling hungry, that I could actually say, no, I don't want to eat this, or I can eat this. Or it's okay even if they finish and it's not left over for me. It is okay. It's not an emergency. I think that helped me. But I also want to say, at the end of the day, it's a tool. And we all have heard of those horror stories of people who do it and go back again. I think you need to reach a point where you determine that I really, really want to get back on all of my legs. And I have been given the ability to do that. I felt like it's a rebirth. Um, my stomach has been fixed for me. I have a choice. I can stretch it the way I stretched it before, or I can stick to the guidelines. And the stretching is absolutely uncomfortable. This, it will taste messier. When it lands here, you are so uncomfortable. You cannot, it is, it is not nice. And then you keep throwing up. I mean, for me, that's been the experience. So I've had to stick and remind myself every day that this is not magic. I must choose correctly. I don't have enough space to eat everything I want, so I have to put in my body what is best for me. I have to be disciplined to make sure I'm taking the, the proteins that I need, because I need those proteins, and it will reach a point where that meat or those beans or whatever will reach you here. But for me, food now became a fuel. And I had to, when we were in India, one of the things I had to ask myself is, 
90% of my enjoyment comes from food. When that has been taken away, what is left in my life? Yeah, you want to know that. So for me, what I did practically, first I went back to the things I loved. I realized that some of the things I loved were associated with food, like watching a movie. I realized I didn't even like watching movies. I liked eating the popcorn and the cakes and the what. So I asked myself what are the other things. So I got more creative in my, like I said, knitting and doing mm -hmm. other things. If I'm visiting with my friends, instead of going to their place for tea, we'll go walking. I started avoiding those people who keep telling you, have more, you'll die tomorrow. <laughs> but we came back after a month and got COVID. This is the thing that made me know I made the right decision. I didn't, when I did the x-ray, it showed that I had pneumonia, but I had no symptoms. The only thing I struggled with, I'll be honest with you, is de dehydration, because I was being unable to take enough water. I had to work on that, but everything else was perfect. I, I was, because of all the multivitamins, eating properly, what I was okay. And everyone was like, no, but you're not eating, because we had to say eating solids. So, I was okay. So I think that to just think through this decision. It's not gonna be magic. I don't want to sit here and cheat you that it's gonna be easy. Sometimes it's difficult to go to a wedding, you're seeing cake, chips, sidri chicken, fish, no, you're like, nyara nyara, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? It's traumatizing. First I was telling Max, my best friend died. I had this love relationship with food and it had to be, I had to fix it with something else. But as I'm learning, it's been a year. But looking at myself in the mirror, I'm like, it is so worth it. <laughs> that I can go to a shop. Yes, I went to a shop and I went to size 50, because who can't look at me? So I was 104. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 you wear size 42. Or you or you try this dress. I'm like, I can't, this can't fit. I look like a stuffed sausage. <laughs> and then it fits. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So go for it. It's scary, yes? Yeah. But the, and the truth of the matter is, if you don't take care of obesity, it will eventually kill you, either way. Mm -hmm. So it's choosing 